I'm gonna do a quick video on my uh, air compressor setup here and my lines and everything. I'm gonna try to make it short, but I wanna go into what my setup is, why I have my lines set up the way they are. Uh, and the way it's set up, it, uh, I rarely get any moisture at my fittings or in my airlines. So here we go. 80 gallon compressor, two stage pump. Excellent. I have my, I got this three quarter max line running quite a bit of this here. I have a ball valve right here came, coming right off the compressor because when I'm not in here, I turn the compressor off and the ball valve closed. Reason why, if I get a bad leak in my air hose or something, I don't want it flying around and hitting, you know, your purdy tube toolboxes and your, your, you know, beating off the side of your car you're trying to do body work on and all that stuff. Uh, and it'll run your compressor to death if you don't catch it. I mean, you're not in here every stinking day like I, I'm not in here every day sometimes. So, second thing, I have an intercooler system here. Reason why you, you have to cool down the air coming out of the compressor. When this thing runs, when you compress air, it, it creates heat, just like the compression stroke of an engine. It creates a lot of heat. Now, heat, when and you know, hot air, when it cools down, which it will, creates a lot of moisture. That's where your moisture generally comes from. Humidity in the air from weather and whatnot, and heat from the air compressing process. So that's hot. So you wanna run your line and get some footage in there before you even put uh, water drains and stuff in there, all right? Because you're gonna flood those, and then those are gonna be hot with temperature, and then those are going to be creating, you know, hot air, and, and then, then it's going to cool down by the time you get your air tools and your spray guns and create water, right? So remember, you want to go high. So I got this going up into the center cooling system slash drain system. So that's hot air creating, and it, it cools down even in that little run right there quite a bit, which is what you want. Well, when that's cooling down, it creates moisture, so I got that fitting high so that that water will just lay in there, collect and run down back into the tank and I catch the water there, right? It's all about directing the water where you want it to go. So then the air obviously goes through here, up this run, which it's cooling down still even more. So it's gonna catch the water and run down into this drain, which I hit. Then it goes down, does the same thing. By the time it hits this run here, you can use your thermometer gun and it'll be room temperature by the time you get here. And I get a lot of water out of this, a lot of water in my tank, uh, about half of the, to a quarter of the water I get in this that I get in this uh, drain here. So I got it doing it again just for fun. And then it goes down. I'll get a little water out of here, but barely anything. It takes a while for it to build up there. Now we got air you know, room temperature air going into my water separators. Now these, I don't even get any water in them unless it's obviously it's summer, it's really humid right now. So I'll start getting a little bit in my filters and air separators and stuff. But trust me, it's very little. Uh, I don't have to drain them that often. So that's the reason for the center cooler little system or whatever you want to call it. And putting everything high so it drains back into your drains, okay? So here I got the max line going up. And I have a T here for that fitting, or for this outlet here. So you notice this goes down, why? So if I do get any condensation, it runs down to this T, goes down and gets caught in that drain before it goes in that air fitting here, right? Cool, it's making sense now. So we go, we go across the rafter here. Okay, we get across the rafter, then I got a air hose reel, which is where most of my action happens. Um, so as you see up there, the fitting is directed up. Why? So the moisture stays down on the line if there is any, and then it'll drain back down in there, right? So I got it going up, and then down into the hose reel, and then down. I'll get a little bit of moisture sometimes coming out right there, very rarely. Uh, it's just real humid days when that stuff happens. So 
I'm gonna do them with another T right up there and then run a line down the post of the lift and then put another drain right here just so I can drain that run. Right? Cool. Um, another thing is that T fitting's pretty high, so a lot of moisture that you do get in this line, long line here, it will go back downhill this way and then you know eventually find its way to a drain somewhere, right? So it's all about just thinking about directing that water. Right? So then we continue on down to another outlet here, okay? And then a drain, you know the deal. I don't get anything here. Never get any water there. Now, I'll show you another little cool thing that I do. Just came to mind to show you guys. When I, when I uh, use spray guns, I usually don't use the same hose and all that that I use air tools and stuff in. So, I got this. This is from Harbor Freight, guys. So it's a desiccant dryer, right? Air water separator dryer deal here. And then this has got where you can put the silicon balls in there, right? So you can catch moisture. Works really well. It's a little overkill, but you know how if you've ever gotten moisture in your paint stuff, it really pisses you off. It causes a lot of work. So here's what I do. I'm trying to hold the camera and everything, so please. Yeah. All right. I got fit air fittings on both sides of this. There we go. So all I do is I click that thing in there. Generally, like I said, this air is already dry, but you know, it is what it is. So I put that in here. And then I got, actually that air hose right here is clean inside. Or, you know, it's, it's my spray gun hose. So I hook this hose up right here. And uh, obviously that's a pretty good way to keep water out. But you know, then I'll also, you know, I'll add a filter right on the end of the spray gun, right? Here's my spray guns up in there laying, being all sexy, but... And then I'll go to town. Another thing I like about this setup is I can take that dryer right there, replace the desiccant balls in it, keep it air super dry. But if I wanna go over here and shoot outside on the other side or something, I can just take it and move it, put it over here on this one or, or you know, whatever. Yeah, so it's pretty, um, I don't know, universal or, you know, you can do whatever you want with this system. And like I said, this is a cheap Harbor Freight one. It works excellent, dude. And then when I'm done, let's see here, one handed operation here. Anyway, I'll just take it, put it back up here in the toolbox and that's just the way it runs. Uh, sometimes, if I get a little moisture in my airline, um, out of my reel, I'm going to put another drain in there, like I said. But if I do get a little bit or I notice some, um, and I, you know, I'm doing body work or whatnot, I will put this on the end of it on my blow gun, at least, or whatever. And I'll just snap that right on the tool um, and get some of the moisture out. You know, if you're working bare metal and you're just blowing it off and you're getting water out of your air gun, you can do it that way. So we're looking at about 10 minutes on this video. So sorry about that. But it took me a while to kind of explain my method to my madness on this air line system I have built. So if you have any questions or comments or whatever, let me know. Um, again, black pipe, cheap, works well. It's fine. It, yeah, it's going to rust, but who cares? It's cheap. It, it's fine, dude. I've had this in here for some years, so you know, just get her done, man. All right? Cool. Later.